Joining us uh, in the studio right now is Professor Paweł Chmieliński from the Polish Academy of Sciences, uh, Institute of Rural and Agricultural Development. Sir, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. All right, well, let's start with uh, this dispute between farmers and uh, EU bureaucrats. Uh, uh, we saw a change uh, recently, um, but my question here is, are the farmers really changing minds uh, in Brussels and in Strasbourg, um, or are the, these decisions just being stalled uh, till after the elections? Yeah, uh, this is a very interesting question because this is like the more, much more complex that we see in the situation right now. Uh, because this is not only the, the uh, natural restoration law that we are discussing here, but also the problems of the farmers. The farmers are facing the problems with the... Um, uh, they are, they are uh, approaching the new season, economic season, what we call in agricultural economics, which is like the new season of the pr production. So f for, this, uh, for this reason, they feel very concerned in the uh, problems they are facing with the relation of the cost of the production. And they right, like right now they have to plan, they have to plan for, the, for the whole season. They have to, right now they have to spend money. And they're thinking, well, is it even worth spending the money if I'm not going to be able to sell uh, my, pro my product at a price that'll, re that'll, that'll have any sort of return for me? Yeah, that, that's why I, I mentioned that the economic uh, uh, season, which is like the counted from the uh, July to June, because the harvesting is, is the starting point. And we have facing the, the, the final phase of this uh, process. And this is the phase when the farmers are selling the grains from the warehouses. And then we have a situation when the grain is still there. And there is like a big, uh, big impact of the Ukraine, which is not like the big impact of the amount, but the impact if, of, the, of the situation that is causing in the Polish market. And we have an impact of the Ukraine and the pressure on the uh, farmers in the whole Europe. Uh, so they have a grain still in the warehouses, they have a higher, high cost of the energy and the means of the production. At the same time, they are like planning the new season and they still are aware that probably they will not get the benefits from the, their uh, work. So that's why they are protesting, because they don't, they don't feel, let's say, um, uh, they don't feel uh, very comfortable in this situation. Uh, and certainly, um, farmers are now looking out not only for themselves, but they're looking also out for now their compatriots. As for instance, at least when it comes to Poland, uh, this is a country majorly uh, connected to agriculture. So uh, it, it, we see definitely a vast support from the part of you know, uh, Polish, uh, Polish people itself. We see that uh, these protests have been happening not only in Poland, but also in the Netherlands and France. Now, my question is, looking at this from a broader perspective, we have Europe that is facing now parliamentary elections. And because of that, now, at least according to recent reports, the EU nature restoration laws have been a bit postponed. Do you think that it is a reason enough to, for, for Europe to be so reluctant when it is facing major crisis? What kind of message does it send to Moscow? Um, yeah, the, this is another very interesting question because Mo Moscow is playing their game. Their, their game is called war. And war is not... And you, if you remember also from the Soviet times, uh, Russia is never playing only the war itself. It's like playing with the dipl diplomacy, but also a lot of uh, attempts they do to influence the public opinion. And this is also we have to, we, can, we don't have a proofs, but we see the, all the movements uh, of the, um, and like the, even in the protests in the, some countries of uh, Europe, I'm not telling that in Poland, but like in some countries of Europe, there is an influence of the someone like from outside so I, I would I would point to um, uh, Russia that is trying to steer a bit those protests because this is like there's something that is uh, uh, that is playing against the Ukraine so this is also the tactic of the Russia 
And as you see... That's uh, right. And, and it yeah. takes people's attention away from the real problems uh, that the farmers are having uh, to uh, the, the war in Ukraine and to Ukrainian grain, which, which forms a very small part of, of the complaints that the farmers have. In. Yeah, this is, this is like, the, as I mentioned, this is not the um, matter of the amount of the grain, but there are like the much of uh, different issues, which is, for example, the, the quality of the grain that is like, it's not the quality itself, but the, the, there is like the aware, like the, there was the, the problem that this grain is not under the control as it is in the EU. So like the farmers say that we have to fulfill the, all those require, requirements. And there is a problem that like the, the free move movement of the, of the products from, from uh, Ukraine <clears throat> and also from Russia, which are not under those, uh, those uh, rules. That's right. Yeah. So th that leads me to, to my next question. Uh, this is something that I'm, I'm struggling with. Um, I understand the rules that uh, the EU wants to, wants to introduce in Europe. I think they're good uh, for, for nature, etc. But how can we achieve this uh, while simultaneously having open global markets? Um, how, can, how can we introduce these rules um, expecting uh, farmers in Europe to be able to produce that grain at the same cost as someone else from outside? Um, the only thing that I could see happening here is uh, putting European farmers out of business. Um, so what are the goals if we keep, if we keep markets open uh, to, to the outside? Who's, uh, whose interests whose interests are the European bureaucrats working for? Yeah, this is this is the, the you're touching a very very core uh, issue of the European Green Deal, because when when it comes to the cost relate like the cost of the production and the relation of the prices, we see that uh, the, the the prices in Europe are much. Um, uh, much dependent on the prices on the uh, international market. So, the, like the harvesting in the countries where there are like big, big farms, uh, they are influencing the the, the, the the cost of the grain. Yeah, like the, the prices for the grain. Yeah. And in this uh, in this way, that the, the uh, EU agriculture is not profitable. So you cannot sell easily the, 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 the crops, the grain, the agricultural raw materials, not processed, but processed is like the high value. The, the raw materials are like the cheap, they will be cheap. So the European Green Deal is playing, like uh, answering the needs of the society because we want to protect the environment. Yeah, so like we want to hold the, uh, the yields and like the soil healthy, keep the bio biodiversity and have like our landscape. Sure, those are nice. very lofty goals. So we very have to pay goals. for this. And this is the, 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 the mechanism of the uh, common agriculture policy. And this is like the mechanism that, is, that was implemented many years ago. Like the, the 20 years ago, uh, Europe European Green Deal was introduced in 2019, and now we have like the problems because there is uh, um, everything was calculated that like direct payments were calculated by farmers in the production, and they said that they have like the very good economic optimum. At the same time, we face the problem of the increased uh, energy prices and the means of the uh, of the production prices, and that's why the farmers they are not in the balance anymore. But this is not the market power. And uh, why we need the agriculture in Europe? We had the pandemia, which showed us that really we need to think about our farming sector, which will give us the uh, safe uh, agricultural yeah, uh, food security. Yeah? So, so like the safe... Um... I know this is a question of food. This is a question of if, if things go wrong, we can end up starving. I mean... I think it's clear what happened when we opened up industry to globalization. What happened in the West? Industry moved away. Now we have to buy everything from places like China. If we, this seems like the same process, but with food. But then we're reliant on outside actors for our food. Yeah. That's a very da dangerous situation to be in, isn't it? Yeah, and the same time, at the same time, but we also would like to have uh, um, to, to, to uh, like. To farm, uh, to, uh, we would like farmers to provide us also something what we call public goods. Those are goods that are belong to us, but are managed like uh, environment or the landscape. They are managed by farmers. So farmers are serving also to us. Yeah. So like we have two things. One is like the food security. So when there will be there some 
um, some external uh, issues like war or like the pandemia, we'll have our farmers, our food produced in a place, and like especially in the regional and even local. Uh, th those short food supply chains will be uh, will be remain. Yeah, like the, the uh, w will work well. Uh, this is one thing. At the same time, we pay to farmers to keep the, the, the environment in the fair condition for the next generation as well. Yeah. So this is this is the key issue of the uh, of the European Green Deal. Uh, for farmers, there is like the matter that they have to start uh, to be the very active uh, active actors in this play. Indeed, they have to now enter the stage and we slowly but surely see, at least with the protests, that they are showing that they are there, they're, let's say, waving and showing, hey, we are also here. Um, and what we see is now now European Union is not only, uh, it's, it's, let's say, coming towards them and showing that they are also caring for their needs. And like you mentioned, food security and also being independent of external factors, like, for instance, war or now pandemia, like you mentioned, is definitely definitely core issue here. Thank you so much, Professor, oh, for joining us yeah. here. Thank you very much.